Armenian students of the world unite. We are the vanguard of the Armenian nation. Peter Kawi, Narekatsi professor of Armenian studies in UCLA. He received his PhD from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem in 1983. Many of his students feel insulted by Peter Kawi as their national identity is being trivialized and ridiculed. The university faculty website shows that Peter Kawi's current research is focused on the history of Armenian theater and film, Armenian medieval history and growth of modern Armenian nationalism. Who is this guy really working for? He's studying about Armenian theater and at the same time inquiring about Armenian nationalism? I, I'm best for uh, I'd come from an Betche, Mer Canal that can Betche, from an Poshmanel for Ansiale, you are saying little line from an Ampochagan Uchuna Ban Vochin Chatsvela. Just like the other representatives of the false armenological school, Peter Cowie claims that Armenians are newcomers to Armenian highland, whose culture begins only around 600 BC. This falsifier of Armenian history and culture claims that the works of the medieval 5th century Armenian historians are quote, parahistorical texts. Peter Cowie, Yerishi Armenian War, page 345. For example, Peter Cowie does not want to accept the fact that Armenians during the medieval times had universities such as the renowned Gladzer University, which he calls, quote, monastic school. Peter Cowie, La Maison, pages 200 through 205. We can cite hundreds of such distortions and falsifications of Armenian history and culture by Peter Cowie. But let us concentrate on what he is teaching to his students at the university. We open the textbook for Armenian C-153 course of Peter Cowie entitled Art, Politics, and Nationalism in Modern Armenian Literature. In this book, we are baffled to find out that nations and communities are only imaginary and that national consciousness and national identity developed in modern times as a result of such imaginary thinkers. The book tries to teach that individual freedom stands above the nation or devotion to the motherland. What is this? Is this an ideological tutoring and political brainwashing or is this a course on Armenian history and culture? In this textbook, you can find excerpts from Ronald Grigor Suni's infamous book. In fact, Peter Cowie's goal is an attempt to decompose the Armenian identity of Armenian students. Simon Payaslian, a professor of modern Armenian history and literature at the Boston University. In 2007, he published his book, The History of Armenia. This book is written like a high school essay which supposedly includes the period of 3,000 years of Armenian history. The back of Piaslan's book includes a generous praise of his work by no other than the promoter of Turkish propaganda, Ronald Suni. For Piaslan, the earliest record of the name Armenia is the Behistun inscription from the 6th century BC. In fact, so far, the earliest found record that mentions Armenia Armani is the inscription of Akkadian king Naram Sin made in the 23rd century BC. Payaslan also does not mention that the same Behistun inscription is trilingual and in fact mentions Armenia as a synonym for Urartu. Payaslan further distorts Armenian history by claiming that the Yervanduni royal dynasty is not Armenian. In the last part of this falsifier's book entitled Independence, Modernization and Globalization, Payaslan writes that between 1992 to 1994, more than 700,000 Armenians migrated out of Armenia, including 61% women. Payaslan uses an unreliable foreign-funded source, HEDC Online, and states that a large percentage decided to remain in their new host countries to work in various jobs, including prostitution. Simon Payaslan, The History of Armenia, page 221. Payaslan makes a cheap attempt at degrading the honor of Armenian women by twisting words and talking about large percentage, including prostitution. One wonders how it was possible for Payaslan to come up with any statistical percentage base. 
This really shows the true intent of Piaslan who is simply fulfilling yet another political order through this book. Piaslan's handlers are preparing Simon Piaslan as the successor of Richard Hovhannisian at UCLA. We have to realize that we're not dealing here with individual cases and the likes of Nina Garsoyan, Ronald Suni, Robert Thompson, Richard Hovhannisian, Peter Cowie, Simon Piaslan and others. In fact, this is an organized, planned and systematically implemented anti-scholastic and anti-Armenian political agenda. The existence of the false armenological school is based on the promotion of the NATO allies of the Anglo-American and Turkish political interests. Not news to anyone that the Turkish government is lobbying the US congressmen and senators by spending millions of dollars. At the same time, they spend considerable sums of money in trying to promote anti-Armenian propaganda in American universities and academic publications. The Turkish government implements financial transactions through its Chase Manhattan branch in Istanbul. The headquarters of the Chase Manhattan Bank in New York has accounts of affiliate charitable organizations which receive Turkish transactions for following distribution. It is not a coincidence that representatives of the false armenological school in March of 2002 in Michigan University organized a closed doors conference on the Armenian genocide entitled Turkish Armenian Dialogue in which not coincidentally there were no scholars from Armenia present. The legendary Hrant Dink's newspaper Akos in its March 22nd issue exposed that the position of the Armenian participants was very appeasing to the Turkish side. The Armenian people have to understand that just because it seems that Richard Hovhannisian, Ronald Suni and James Russell stand in defense of the recognition of the Armenian genocide does not mean that these falsifiers are in fact honest. The threat of recognizing the Armenian genocide has always been used in the United States as a political leverage and a type of blackmail on its own ally Turkey as part of its carrot and stick policy. In order to guarantee Turkish loyalty to American geopolitical interests, the US government keeps the issue of the Armenian genocide recognition in circulation, but never lets the issue find its justice. So, Richard Hovhannisian, Ronald Suni and James Russell are permitted to make noise about the Armenian genocide. In 1997, the above noted representatives of the false armenological school agreed to collectively publish a two-volume book entitled The Armenian People from Ancient to Modern Times under the editorship of Richard Hovhannisian. This book was designed as an Armenian studies textbook for the colleges and universities in the United States. This anti-scholastic, full of distortions, anti-Armenian collegial textbook unmasked the false armenological school and their destructive agenda. This book opens a new rift between the new generation of Armenians in Armenia and the diaspora. The guilt for this destructive and malicious endeavor falls not only upon the authors and the chief editor of the book, but also on some of the officials in the Armenian National Academy of Sciences. These officials, who in Soviet times were used to serving their Bolshevik masters in the Kremlin, have today found new paymasters in the United States. Because of financial expectations in forms of grants, they are bestowing medals, titles and even honorary citizenship of Armenia to the representatives of the false armenological school who are truly sworn enemies of the Demand Army. from your academic consuls to remove from circulation the two-volume book The Armenian People from the Ancient to the Modern Times. Demand and write your academic consuls and expose the fact that your Armenian studies professors are complete illiterates who cannot even write a simple three-page school essay in Armenian. If the above two means are not effective, then collectively drop your Armenian studies subjects in the universities and in written form notify the university administration about the actual reason for your refusal to take the Armenian Studies courses. 
They think they can humiliate, mock and destroy our national identity. They think by brainwashing us, they can implement a white genocide. They think they can destroy Armenia in a new way. They think they can cut us from our roots and erase our memory. They were mistaken before, and they are mistaken today. The Armenian people, from ancient to modern times, will live forever. Thank you.